So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the training session on healthcare personnel influenza vaccination reporting for long-term care facilities. My name is Elizabeth Kyle, and I work in the Immunization Services Division at CDC. So this presentation will cover two main items. The first objective is to review the value in reporting healthcare personnel flu vaccination data in long-term care facilities. The second objective is to review the healthcare personnel vaccination module in NHSN and how facilities can use this to track the flu data. So before we get into the presentation, I was wondering how many of you received your flu shot for last year's flu season, and you can raise your hand. Oh, wow, that's great. It's a very good number. So the 2018-2019 flu season was quite challenging and millions of people contracted influenza. So hopefully everyone will start to get their flu shot for the upcoming 2019-2020 flu season by this fall. So now we'll review a few points about healthcare personnel working in long-term care facilities and why flu vaccination is so important. So as of 2009, over 4 million healthcare personnel worked in long-term care facilities. So approximately 3 million of these healthcare personnel provided direct care to patients. And this is nearly one third of the total healthcare workforce. And by the year 2050, the number of healthcare personnel working in long-term care settings is projected to increase between 5.7 and 6.6 .6 million. So influenza is problematic in residential facilities as the virus can spread very quickly. Residents of long-term care facilities are at increased risk of complications from infection because of their age and or chronic conditions. Also, healthcare personnel can contract influenza from and or also transmit the virus to the residents of the facility. And there are some barriers surrounding the vaccination of healthcare personnel in these settings. So for example, facilities may not offer the influenza vaccine or promote vaccination of healthcare personnel. High levels of staff turnover can be problematic in terms of vaccination and tracking. There are several benefits to having healthcare personnel working in long-term care facilities vaccinated against influenza. Influenza vaccination will help to prevent the spread of influenza not only among the residents of the facilities, but to other healthcare personnel. This could reduce illness related to influenza in facility residents and may also reduce deaths. Influenza vaccination also reduces illness and absenteeism among healthcare personnel. The Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine advocates mandatory influenza vaccination of healthcare personnel in long-term care facilities. And exceptions to influenza vaccination should only be made in the case of medical contraindications. All healthcare personnel, and that's regardless of patient contact, should be vaccinated. Unvaccinated healthcare personnel are advised to wear masks when they have direct contact with patients during the flu season. It's also recommended that facilities offer free influenza vaccine to paid and volunteer healthcare personnel in the post-acute and long-term care settings. So there are several strategies that long-term care facilities can implement 
to increase the vaccination rates among healthcare personnel. These evidence-based strategies include providing free vaccination on-site at the long-term care facility, offering influenza vaccination to healthcare personnel at a variety of times and locations. Facilities are also encouraged to actively promote vaccination, and they can also deliver reminders on an individual level about the importance of vaccination. Facilities can also review and assess vaccination rates and give feedback on performance. So now I'll turn the presentation over to my colleague, Megan Lindley, and she'll be reviewing how to use the healthcare personnel vaccination module in NHSN. Thank you, Elizabeth. My name is Megan Lindley, and I work as the Deputy Associate Director for Science in the Immunization Services Division at CDC. Now we'll go over how NHSN data can be used to improve healthcare personnel vaccination in long-term care facilities. So all the information that we've uh, given you leads to the question, why should you use the healthcare personnel vaccination module? And the answer is not because CMS is making me. Uh, the healthcare personnel vaccination module is designed to ensure that healthcare personnel influenza vaccination percentages are both consistent over time within a single facility and comparable across facilities. So you can track your own progress from year to year, as well as benchmark your healthcare personnel vaccination rates against other facilities, should you choose. And using NHSN to monitor influenza vaccination among healthcare personnel may also result in increased vaccination coverage because improvements in tracking and reporting healthcare personnel vaccination status will allow long-term care facilities to better identify and target unvaccinated healthcare personnel. Uh, and I'll show you a little more about that in a minute. And hopefully uh, increased influenza vaccination coverage among healthcare personnel uh, should result in reduced morbidity and mortality related to influenza among uh, long-term care facility residents, as well as healthcare personnel working in long-term care. So there are several ways that long-term care facilities can put these data to good use. The healthcare personnel vaccination module allows facilities to monitor vaccination trends over time, as I noted, uh, among different healthcare personnel groups. Uh, and I'll show you detail on that in a subsequent slide. The data will also show if there are certain groups with lower vaccination rates. For example, a long-term care facility might notice that employees have higher influenza vaccination rates than volunteers. And reviewing the data may also help facilities identify barriers to improving healthcare personnel influenza vaccination in their facility. For example, the facility in the previous example may realize that vaccination rates are lower among volunteers because the volunteers are not covered by policies and programs that apply to influenza vaccination of long-term care employees at the facility. Uh, facilities can also use NHSN data to help them make decisions about efforts to increase influenza vaccination among health healthcare personnel. For example, a long-term care facility could update its annual influenza vaccination program to cover employee and non-employee staff, or could choose to increase the number of days vaccination is offered to healthcare personnel at the facility. Alternately, uh, it may not be the vaccination program that is an issue, but the tracking. So a facility may decide to improve internal tracking systems, for example, by turning to computer-based or automated tracking to better identify unvaccinated healthcare personnel in real time during the influenza season. So now we will very briefly go over the reporting requirements for the healthcare personnel vaccination module. Uh, there's information, information on where to find more details about this included later in the presentation. So for purposes of NHSN reporting, there are three required denominator categories shown on this slide. One category consists of employees, the other two are non-employees. And for the required employee category, for purposes of NHSN reporting in this module, an employee is anybody who receives a direct paycheck from the facility, so who is on your payroll. The second denominator category are non-employee licensed independent practitioners uh, who are defined as physicians, 
nurses in advanced practice or physician assistants who are affiliated with the facility but not employed by it, so do not receive a paycheck. The third denominator category that's required is adult students and trainees and volunteers aged 18 or over. Uh, and these are exactly who it sounds like. It's medical, nursing, and other health professional students, residents, interns, and trainees, uh, and anyone who volunteers in the facility who, again, is affiliated but not employed by the facility. There's also a final optional denominator category, which is other contract personnel. Uh, these are persons providing care, treatment, or services at the facility through a contract who do not fit into any of the three previous categories. This category is optional for NHSN reporting. Uh, it is something that can be used, for example, to meet requirements for joint commission accreditation if you're required to report on contract staff. So the numerator for this measure is all employees who are in the denominator and fall into one of these five categories. The first category is healthcare personnel who receive influenza vaccination at your healthcare facility during the time the vaccine becomes available um, which can be usually August or September uh, through March 31st of the influenza season, so it does cut off. The second category is healthcare personnel who were vaccinated outside the facility and provided a written report or other documentation of influenza vaccination. This can include their own written attestation. And this is the only numerator category for which documentation is required for NHSN reporting in this module. The third category is healthcare personnel who have a medical contraindication to influenza vaccine. And for NHSN, the accepted medical contraindications are a severe allergic reaction, so anaphylaxis or similar, to a previous dose of influenza vaccine or to any influenza vaccine component, including egg protein. And the other contraindication is a history of Guillain-Barre syndrome within six weeks following a previous influenza vaccination. The fourth numerator category is healthcare personnel who de decline to receive influenza vaccine for non-medical reasons. And that category would include if your facility has uh, religious or personal belief exemptions in place. That's where you could record those personnel. And the final category is healthcare personnel whose vaccination status is unknown or do not meet the criteria for any of the other categories above. Uh, a couple additional reporting notes. The denominator for the measure consists of healthcare personnel who are physically present in the facility for at least one day between October 1st and March 31st. So staff who are working always off-site, doing telemedicine, otherwise not at the facility are not counted in this measure. And healthcare personnel are included regardless of clinical responsibility or patient contact, uh, which is consistent with that policy from the Society of Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine that Elizabeth mentioned, as well as ACIP recommendations. So if you have an employee, for example, who is working in uh, accounting or something, who doesn't encounter patients, that person, if they are still in your facility, would be included in this measure. So I know you're all very excited to report these data. So how do I get started in NHSN? The healthcare personnel vaccination module is located within the healthcare personnel safety component. That means it's separate from all of the uh, component, the modules that you're already used to using that are in the long-term care component. So the first step is for your NHSN facility administrator to activate the healthcare personnel safety component for your facility. And within the healthcare personnel vaccination module, there are two required forms that need to be completed in order to report data. The first is the healthcare personnel safety monthly reporting plan. And the second is the healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary data report. The seasonal survey on influenza vaccination programs for healthcare personnel collects data on facility programs for encouraging influenza vaccination of healthcare personnel. The survey is not required, uh, but we do encourage you to fill it out because it provides valuable information on how the policies and practices at your facility may correlate with the vaccination that you report. So you may have noticed we have an immunization booth right outside this auditorium, uh, and we would love it if you would come see us uh, at the break this afternoon or tomorrow morning. We can assist you with adding the healthcare personnel safety component if your facility is already enrolled and you have a computer, or we can provide you with information on how you can set this up when you return to work. The next few slides I'll outline a few resources that may be useful to you. CDC has created a resource toolkit for long-term care employers that you can find at the URL that's located on that slide. 
Uh, it includes a wealth of information on the importance of influenza vaccination of healthcare personnel and long-term care, uh, as well as some of the information on challenges and strategies to overcome these challenges that Elizabeth presented. The second resource is, of course, the NHSN website. If you look under Materials for Enrolled Facilities and Long-Term Care, there's a section on healthcare personnel influenza vaccination that includes the data collection forms I mentioned, as well as the reporting protocol, frequently asked questions, and other valuable information. And your final resource is us, of course, Elizabeth and myself. Uh, you can email that user support address that you know so well, nhsn at cdc.gov. Uh, and please include healthcare personnel flu summary and long-term care in the subject line uh, so that it gets triaged to us faster. This concludes our presentation and we really appreciate your time and are happy to answer any questions you have now or at the booth at the break.